All right, guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about Nash theorem and Nash bargaining rule. Okay, let's start with Nash theorem. Um, so he says a bargaining rule satisfies proto optimality, symmetry, scale invariance, and independence of irrelevant alternatives, those four axioms, if and only if it is the Nash rule. Hmm. So it's a very strong uh, theorem. It basically says if those four axioms are your measure of goodness, all right, meaning if you're looking for rules where whatever bargaining problem they're applied on, they will always satisfy those axioms, predoptimality, symmetry, scale invariance, IIA. Well, then there's only one such rule. And this rule is what, well, he, the, John Nash doesn't call it Nash rule, but uh, the, the rule is basically defined by this. Um, I use the notation NSD rather than F. So the Nash rule for given bargaining problem S and D, it basically uh, find the payoff vector, individually rational payoff vector, which maximizes this multiplication, xi minus di, where i from 1 to n, okay? So it basically, uh, for each player, uh, it subtracts, uh, it, 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 it looks at the, what this player is going to get, xi, subtract his um, disagreement value, di, and then multiply it with uh, the second player, with third player, with fifth player, and then multiply all that and then maximize it, all right? And so this is exactly what the Nash bargaining solution is. Uh, that's it. This is how that rule works. So in order to visualize it, let's again go back to our buyer-seller problem. And if you remember, that was our set of uh, uh, feasible payoffs. Um, and the, the, <clears throat> the disagreement point was zero, zero. In this problem, what's going to be the uh, Nash solution? Well, it's going to be 50-50. Well, why is that so? Well, because if you calculate this, this is argmax, where x is coming from the set of individual irrational payoffs, but we know the set of uh, feasible payoffs is equivalent to set of individual irrational payoffs in this uh, bargaining problem. So I just wrote x is in s. Uh, it maximizes x 1 minus d1, which is 0, so it's just x1, times x2 minus d2, which is 0 again. So it's basically x1 times x2. So how do you max... So this is very much like a um, utility maximization problem with a budget constraint where the utility is x1 times x2, right? So how do we find this problem? Well, simple. This is kind of a kind of iso... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, indifference curve, okay? Um, or, you know, set of all x1 and x2s where the, <clears throat> the, the, the value of x1 times x2 is the same. We don't call it uh, indifference uh, curve, obviously, in the bargaining uh, framework, but it, 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 the idea is very much like indifference curve. But this is a set of all x1 and x2s, where x1 times x2 gives us exactly the same value. Obviously, if you want to have a different x1 times x2 value, it's going to have a different uh, level curve. But the thing is, we would like to maximize that. And the point, the x that maximizes this, is this point where its slope is exactly equal to the slope of the... Uh, you know, uh, x1 plus x2 equals 100 line. So if you solve this, it's basically the solution is going to be maximized by choosing x1, x2 um, in this set S, maximize x1 times x2, um, subject to, obviously, x1 plus x2 less than or equal to uh, 100, okay? And uh, in fact, uh, you don't, I mean, uh, you don't have to, 
use less than or equal to you can use equal to why is that so well because x1 times x2 this is an increasing function it increases both x1 and x2 so therefore uh, you, you know uh, the maximizing uh, uh, x1 x2 point will never be uh, satisfying x1 plus x2 strictly less than 100 it will always be equal to 100 okay and then just solve this maximization problem I think the solution is very easy how so write x1 as 100 oops minus x2 all right and then plug this into here so your maximization problem becomes maximized by choosing x2 um, where this x1 times x2 becomes 100 minus x2 times x2 so you take the derivative with respect to x2 set it equal to 0 if you do that 100 minus 2x2 equals 0 so x2 is equal to 50 and you know what if you plug x2 50 here x1 should also be 50 so therefore 50 50 is the only and unique solution of the Nash bargaining problem all right good well obviously we're not going to prove this theorem but we should definitely check if really this rule um, is pretty optimal one two symmetric three scale invariance a satisfying scale invariance and finally iia well showing formally that a rule satisfied those properties is harder than showing rules satisfy those properties for a specific bargaining problem I think it's kind of obvious that given that the bargaining problem is this one uh, it is uh, pretty optimal right because it's on the boundary it is symmetric right the game is symmetric and so 50 50 division is also symmetric is it scale invariance huh well I have to scale this up or down okay and then IIA, does it really satisfy IIA? Well, I have to consider some set S, some set T, etc. So these two properties, it's harder to uh, prove for this specific game. But remember, product optimality, symmetry, scale invariance, IIA, these properties must be satisfied for all possible bargaining games. All right. And so therefore showing that a rule satisfy those properties is not too straightforward. And this is exactly what we're going to do next.